Welcome to the shade beneath my tangerine tree canopy. While I'm smiling, I'm really not smiling on the inside. As I move through the tree here, you can see there is way too much sunlight coming through. Honestly, I have a block above my head, so it's better to see me. You can clearly see straight through to the back block wall. I have a few goals for this video. First, I want to raise awareness for citrus tree diseases. I'll be showing you what my citrus trees are up against to provide you with examples to compare against your own trees. The arborists we hired diagnosed the trees with three specific problems. Ash whiteflies. I found an example on a weed in the yard because we started the treatment and I am thrilled to say they are no longer active on the tree. There are some active whitefly carcasses caught in the old spider webs on the back side of the leaves they destroyed. Ash whiteflies cause leaves to turn yellow, curl, then fall prematurely. Asian citrus leaf liner. You can see from the intricate patterns that would be beautiful if they weren't on a plant which is growing fruit I would like to eat. This pattern is inside of the leaf, separating the top layer from the rest of the leaf. This now shiny part will act as a magnifying glass, inviting the sun to burn a hole into the leaf or causes it to curl if it's alongside an edge. Either way, the leaf is deformed and weakened. And Alternaria brown spot, which is a fungus. My untrained logic reasons once the tree is infected with one disease, it's more likely to pick up additional infestations since the tree's energy is spent on defending against these predators. I don't know which one started first, but what matters is the trees are certainly in a state of decline and it needs to get turned around before they're all past the point of rescue. As we get started, I would love to hear from you. Add a comment below to share your own experience and advice if you have or had your own citrus tree diseases. We can all learn together. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss my follow on videos where I share how my citrus trees are progressing. Your support helps me create new DIY videos which come out every Friday. Before I go over the next goals, disclaimer, I am not an arborist. They are the experts and knowledgeable in what's impacting your local area. They know about your climate and they can diagnose with accuracy what the problem is and come up with the best plan to make your trees healthy again. That being said, I will share with you what products I'm now using, but your own amount, schedule, and even products will most likely need to be different than mine. Again, your local arborist will know what works best for your environment and will give your trees the best fighting chance. There's one example of the white flies right there. I also want to capture a checkpoint, a snapshot in time, so I can see where I'm at in the process when I look back in time. This started in January. We talked to a local arborist who came out and started the first shock treatment. It's now May. But really, this didn't start in January. If I'm honest with myself, this tree in particular has been in decline for a couple of years. Maybe you're in the same boat as me. Since I'm originally a blogger, here's a picture I took when I was talking about the watering system in my backyard two years ago, so you have a point of reference on how it looked before. I justified it to myself thinking, maybe it's just a hot summer. Perhaps I didn't water it often enough when I went out of town. Or saying it was just a bad year. So virtual high five to you for looking into this and not just writing it off in your head. There are three main products we're now using to treat all four trees. An Oro Blanco grapefruit, an Arizona sweet orange, a Turaco blood orange, and a tangerine. Each tree reacted a little different to each product and each application. The arborist immediately placed a Moje Vigor 53 pod on each tree. These little tree injectors are the initial shock treatment I mentioned. It will help a tree recover the nutrients lost while fighting off the disease and will jumpstart regrowth. He drilled a hole in the bark to get to the sweet spot in the active growth part of the trunk just before drilling into the heartwood on the inside. This is where I'm going to be intentionally vague because your tree may need a different amount or an entirely different kind of nutrient mix. There are several kinds of this fast acting liquid medicine on the market. Also, you may need more pods or drain some of the liquid out as he did on our small blood orange tree. When the first round was applied in January, the grapefruit boomed. The orange tree showed some signs of growth, but the leaves were thin. And the blood orange tree had a little growth, but nothing spectacular. The tangerine tree did nothing. Next, we started applying this Be Safe Organicide 3-in-1 spray. This is to wash off the white flies and give the leaves a protective coating. I haven't seen any more active white ash flies on the leaves since we started the first few rounds of treatment, as prescribed. You'll have to get a sprayer like this Chapin sprayer to attach to your water hose. This sprayer allows you to choose how much Organicide will be mixed with the outgoing water. 
You'll also want to clean the sprayer out as soon as you use it since this Organizide is designed to harden as soon as it dries. It's safe for pets, kids, and you while you're applying it, but watch out, it is stinky since it has a fish oil base. The leaves now have a shiny protective coat. The next step was switching out fertilizer brands. I used to use Arizona's Best Citrus Food. It's an economical choice at Home Depot. Second, I live in Arizona and it has the word Arizona in the name, so it should be formulated for Arizona, right? I also use this fertilizer in conjunction with the calendar I was given years ago, feeding the tree a couple weeks apart in the fall and the spring. The arborist recommended switching to Kellogg Garden Organics Fruit Tree Fertilizer. Kellogg Fertilizer contains mycorrhizal fungi, whatever, however you want to say that. Google doesn't care as long as you spell it right. Google says this fungus binds to the roots and creates a barrier between harmful soil fungus and tree roots. I'm following the directions on the back, fertilizing every two months. Arizona's Best Fertilizer is still a good product. I've used it for over 10 years. I'll interleave it with the Kellogg fertilizer as soon as the trees start fully bouncing back. I had just applied fertilizer before the arborist came in January, so I had to wait until March for the next round. When I applied the Kellogg fertilizer, the grapefruit had already had its growth spurt and had a wonderful amount of blooms. The Arizona sweet orange had some growth with more thin leaves. The blood orange tree responded with a good amount of growth with full leaves when I applied the fertilizer. The tangerine tree did nothing. I put in the next round of Moje Vigor 53 pods, admittedly a little later than I should have. The results were different this time. Again, the grapefruit already had its growth spurt. The Arizona sweet had another round of growth with skinny leaves, and the blood orange tree had another great growth spurt with full leaves. This time, the tangerine tree did something. Look at this growth. There's some growth. It's hidden. It's definitely below the tree line. Come on, focus. All right. Look at this. There's some growth. So it's not on the outside. The inside branches are coming back. So we'll see what happens over the course of the summer. It right. And then these bottom leaves will be protected by the outside branches. So maybe that's how it's going to recover. So I'll... a tree will be just happy and it can't be dead. I hope so. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that would be so exciting. Okay, so there's hope. This is exciting. I was just looking at the outside and that just wasn't happening. There's just no new growth on the outside, but you can see even right there, those branches, even right here too. You can see that. You can see right here, all along there, even on the outside. I'll admit to doing a little self-medication here. I added a second pod a couple weeks after the first one, but on the opposite side of the tree. You see the directions that came with the pods called for three pods based on the size of the tree. Did the arborist think the tree was too sick to handle more than one? I don't know, but with absolutely no growth from the other treatments and products, what could hurt? Admittedly, it could hurt if I overdid it, but maybe this tree was just storing the energy inside, or maybe it didn't get enough to do anything. You know when you get sick, if you don't take the full dose of medicine, it doesn't really do you any good? That was the same logic that I applied here. Here's another sign that made me take the risk tree sap. When I replaced the pods on the other trees, they all had some tree sap coming out. The tangerine tree did not. Did the tangerine tree just have a bad hole as in the drill went in too far or not enough so the medicine didn't go into the growth skin? Or was the tree just too far gone to notice a hole needing to be patched? I was willing to bet a $5 pod on trying something rather than doing nothing and letting the tree die. While I'm admitting the self-medication, I might as well throw in a little self-diagnosis in here. I think there could be a couple additional factors at play. I'm going to share something I don't advertise often, but it's an experience that's very relevant to this discussion. When rain is imminent, our family deploys buckets. We call it our manual water and catchment system. After it rains, we pour the buckets of collected rainwater on the trees. Hmm, little cardio workout here. And cardio and weightlifting. 
Anyway, the trees respond extremely well. Unfortunately, I don't have picture proof, so you'll just have to take my word. The leaves turn a darker shade and grow during the monsoon season. Last year, I was out of town often and relied solely on city water to water the trees. I was also out of town for all the spring rains this year, missing the last one by a day. It happened right when I drove in. The University of Arizona Department of Agriculture has a document on citrus irrigation which confirms my theory. Curled leaves with brown on the bottom tip is a sign of salty water, which is what comes out of the city water tap in comparison to what comes out of the sky. On top of that, the soil has a high clay content, which is collecting all of the additives from the city water. This monsoon season, I'll be all about fleshing out the chemicals in the soil with rainwater. That pretty well sums up where the trees are here at the end of May, and I look forward to updating you later in the year. I also want to address that this is a DIY channel where all of us say, I can do this myself. One of the first things I just said was hire a local arborist, which is the exact opposite. I'll admit, I did a cost analysis on what would happen if I hired an arborist versus if I DIY'd this myself. The tree died and I had to put in a new tree. Just imagining the labor and the emotional disappointment in cutting down this tree. Barrel after barrel of dead limbs. And then having to buy a new tree. Getting it home, stuffing it in your car trunk, borrowing a friend's truck, or paying the company to deliver it. Then there's the time it takes to establish the tree. Either way, it's going to take years to get fruit back on this tree or a new transplant, so that's a wash. Or I can hire an expert, give this tree a new lease on life, and forget about all of that extra work. On top of that, I'm getting to keep a tree that has memories. This is my daughter's first climbing tree. I had my coworkers over for happy hours, we called them juice parties, where we had hand-squeezed tangerine juice with whipped cream vodka? Whipped cream rum. So delicious. Of course, I have more memories, and I'm sure you have similar stories as well. The few hundreds it takes for an arborist to diagnose and begin shock treatments is more than worth it. Now multiply all of that work and emotion by four, because I have four citrus trees that were all in some state of decline. I love using that word was. I get to use the word was. You're paying for their education, their expertise, a plan for recovery, and the initial shock treatment. I certainly would not have known to use all three of these products in conjunction without some serious doubts. On top of that, you're supporting local. Everyone is hurting from coronavirus right now, and if you can swing it, you're able to breathe a little life into your own community. Thanks for watching. I hope you're able to take the next step in contacting a local arborist or your local environmental agency to get a new lease on life and enjoy your trees for years to come. I'll turn this over to you. Please add a comment below to share your own experience or advice. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. I appreciate your support.